Hello, everyone. <laughs> Two years ago, when we started to interview candidates for our robotics team, we really liked to ask the question, what is your dream job? One of our candidates replied, I want to be an engineer to build things that are useful. And my parents want me to, build, want me to be, become a lawyer or a doctor. <laughs> I'm not here to make generalizations nor enemies. However, today I am here to tell you what is an engineer. From what I have observed, Hong Kong people are under the illusion that engineers are only infrastructure builders or construction workers. But I can assure you that engineers are much more than that. Growing up, I realized I was a very lucky kid. My parents never forced me to do anything. I could make my own choices, my own decisions, as long as I was a good guy. When I was six years old, I was introduced to mechanisms. And from that moment, I was hooked. I wanted more of it. But it wasn't until when I was grade four where I was introduced to the robotics team of our primary school by three of my teachers. And with some luck in that year, we won the first Lego League for three consecutive times. And we even got to go to St. Louis to compete when I was in grade six. When I moved to high school, I decided to found the robotics team with my peers and trust that everything would work out just all right. And turns out it was one of the best decisions I ever made. From that moment, we started to work up our way because we didn't have any resources and we had to write proposals every night and spend a lot of lo long nights to write proposals to seek for resources. But when we got some resources, nothing seemed to work out for us in competitions. We lost in many competitions, in competitions which we thought were very familiar with or in competitions where we thought that they were easy victories. <coughs> and eventually we wanted to drop out, but on the verge of dropping out, one student introduced us to Infomatrix, which is this competition. And I said, why not? But however, the problem was we don't know what is Infomatrix. Turns out it is a line following and sumo competition. And to our surprise, we got the first place in Hong Kong. And we even went to Romania for the world finals. And to our surprise, we even got the bronze medal there. Today, <laughs> thank you. Things went uphill from there. Today, I thought I should introduce something that is, very f that is very interesting and something that is exclusive for every one of you. You might think, I'm a grown guy. Why am I playing with Lego toys? These are actually not normal Legos. This is called Lego Mindstorms. It is a very intelligent brick system designed by the MIT Media Lab. The LEGO Intelligent Brick System, it has a lot of sensors and a lot of modules, so we can program it. And it also is a very powerful platform for prototyping, and it is very cost efficient. Let me demonstrate our football robot. So this is our attacker, and this was our goalie. And let's put the goalie here for a moment. And it will first be guarding its position. And our attacker will start its way and move towards the goal. Although not every time it will score the goal, however, it is able to score a goal when, however, by doing multiple attempts, we are able to score many goals. And in one competition, we even scored six goals against the Russians. And that was the third place match. So why did we adapt this strategy? When a robot is attacking from the other side, we are able to, as you can see, it backs up and tries to find the ball again. This is because this acts as a defense and it can defend against the attacking robot. <coughs> and by doing that, we are able to keep a clean sheet for many competitions. Let's move on to another thing. This is called the hypercycle. It may appear to be a normal gym bike for every one of you, but it is actually an interactive system for ADHD students. Why did we choose a gym bike for ADHD students? This is not a normal gym bike. It is equipped with special sensors, and it is 
also equipped with a special algorithm and an e-book. And why did we use pedals on a gym bike? Well, it's a gym bike. And from our research and interviews, we realized that from each ADHD student, they really liked to you do constant repetitive actions to help themselves concentrate and reduce distractions from elsewhere. This can also develop their sports potential. And this is a side effect that is actually good for them. For the learner engagement, you, for on every gym bike, you can actually see two pieces of metals. What are those for? Those are actually sensors to detect your heartbeat. And by detecting their heartbeat, we are able to determine whether the user is concentrating. If he or she is not concentrating while the ebook is teaching, we can simply pop a question to them and they have to answer the question. And by doing that, we are able to capture their attention back to the ebook. And by doing that, their attentiveness will increase a lot because we also have a gift reward system and it is customized to each student. And, they and from their favorite rewards or treats, we are able to give them rewards and they, and they will look very well in their overall score sheet. <coughs> to talk about implementation, this is a very serious problem that schools have told us when we were designing this device. So we decided by the pedaling motion, we connected the pedals to a dynamo and it is able to charge the whole system. And it doesn't need external supply of electricity. And along with the sleek design of a gym bike, we are able to implement it in a classroom setting. Although we are not engineers, our work certainly aligns with the work of an engineer. Engineering is a very broad field. It is not only about building infrastructures. It is just the tip of the iceberg. Engineers inspire life. We are inspired by, we inspire people by doing things such as solving problems. And we also inspire people to solve problems together with engineers. Engineers create, design, and innovate. We design things that matter and we design things to solve real life problems. But more importantly, engineers are inspired by life. We are inspired by scientific models. We are inspired by the things around us. And we are inspired by real life problems that every single one of you face every day. Um, my name is Sean. I work with Isaac, Malcolm, and Nick on these projects. We'll get to this cute little droid in a moment, but first let's explain why it's here, okay. Um, I think you all remember what happened a few months ago in June in the Ngao Tao Kok fire. It was a Tuesday that the industrial building caught fire. It took 80 hours for the fire to be in control. And throughout those 80 tedious hours, two heroic firemen, Thomas Chang and Samuel Hoy, sacrificed. Two heroic firemen carrying out their duties, sacrificed. How exotic does that sound? You wouldn't expect to sacrifice while you're working, right? So that's what we thought. And that's when an idea sprang in our minds. Why are the firemen asked to do such a dangerous job of going into these unknown environments to look for information? Obviously, a robot should, should be doing it for them, right? So we thought of this. And an existing solution to this problem would be these fire search tank robots that are extremely bulky and slow. Um, they can be equipped with cameras and they can climb over debris. But the problem is they're simply too slow and they can't maneuver around quickly enough. The problem is they waste precious time that can be used for saving people and that's not okay. So let's go back to this robot right here. It's called the BB-8. I think most of you remember it from Star Wars. Um, the Force Awakens. <laughs> um, Ever since the first trailer came out for it, it actually r roamed all over the internet. Everybody loved it. But we wanted to m take this further. Why is this special? It's just a ball with a head on it. So why did the engineers create it this way? It's just that it can roll quick and have good functionality. And this inspired us to create a fire search robot that's based on this design. 
So we're actually building the real robot right now. This is a test version that we built to study the robot in more detail and um, firsthand. Um, this is a test. We're building a real thing. Okay, thanks. Um, we're building the real thing right here, and it's hopefully going to be finished by spring. It's going to be equipped with a spectrum of sensors, including temperature, temperature sensors, air composition sensors, which allows the drawer to go into these fire environments, collecting information about air composition and temperature, sending them back to control centers so that firemen, when they, when they prepare for going into these environments, they're going to be able to plan what they're going to do and know what's inside the building and not just go in and not understand the dangers that are waiting for them. With a drill, it's also going to be able to go through walls and doors that they cannot pass through. And this can trigger flash fires to occur before firemen go into these environments and will save their lives. But that's not the point here, right? The technicalities don't really matter. The point we're trying to make is that engineers really try to make a difference. We're secondary students, come on, but we try. We try to help people, and that's the point. <laughs> so on that note, we'd like to thank everyone who's been involved with our projects. Nick and Malcolm, our other two team members, Brian, Alex, Patrick, the school, the headmaster, teachers, deans. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. Um, and this final thing we'd like to say is that engineering isn't a competition. It's not a game. It's really serious, it's about solving problems, spotting problems that others cannot see, and you solve them. So it's a competition against human obstacles, a game against nature. Thank you. <laughs>